Hariri is gone, but the demonstrators remain. Thousands stayed on the street into the night at the main protest camp close to the Prime Minister's headquarters. They see Hariri's resignation as a victory, but for them it is just the first step. Basically one part of the, uh, of the war, if we can say that, uh, we need a change. We need. We start with the with the uh, with the government. Uh, the bigger change with the, w will be with the establishment. The purpose of the demonstration was to change the whole system, the democracy that was stolen by political parties for 30 years. Earlier, protesters celebrated the moment of the first big change to that political system. Prime Minister Hariri announced to the nation that he was stepping down. <laughs> I am going to the presidential palace to submit the government's resignation to President Michel Aoun and to the people in all regions in response to the will of the many Lebanese people who have taken to the streets to demand change. But there are powerful forces in Lebanon who are against the change the protesters are demanding. Before Hariri announced his resignation, Supporters of the Shiite Muslim political movements Hezbollah and Amal rampaged through the main protest camp. It was the worst violence since protests started nearly two weeks ago. Activists are back at that camp and are determined to continue their fight. Hariri's departure has lifted their spirits, but it may not be enough to end the country's turmoil. The protests in Lebanon were triggered by a tax plan that has since been withdrawn. The demonstrators may be angry at the current government, but the country's problems are much deeper and much older. There's the country's struggling economy. Lebanon is deeply in debt and youth unemployment is at 37%. The failing economy is putting pressure on public services. There are chronic problems with electricity, the water supply and garbage collection. Another big issue is corruption. Lebanon is ranked 138th out of 180 on Transparency International's Corruption Index, and the country's intricate sectarian political system only complicates matters. Lebanon's political system mirrors sectarian divisions in the country. The rules dictate that every major religion is represented, but critics say that builds sectarian divisions into the fabric of government. Well, DW correspondent Basil Aridi is in Lebanon's capital, Beirut, and joins us now. Basil, the protesters say they are fed up with governments, uh, with Lebanon's sectarian form of government. What are they offering or what are they proposing as an alternative? They don't have uh, any offer, in fact. We ha they have demands. They are asking the government, the new government, the caretaker government, to establish new laws, civil laws, uh, and the parliament as well to have a uh, constitutional uh, amendments regarding the two issues: the governmental, the governmental and parliamental uh, works will lead to a civil state, according to the protesters. That's why they are still uh, taking the squares in West Bay, in, uh, in downtown Beirut, and some other major cities to follow up all these reform packages. Okay, the, um, the protesters have managed to achieve one thing. They've gotten the resignation of the president. President Hariri has stepped back. What impact is his resignation likely to have on the, on the protest movement? The, pro the, the resignation was saluted by all the protesters and they said that they achieved a victory. According to the protesters, it's the first victory. They are asking for two more things the uh, electoral new uh, law, a new electoral law, and uh, early elections, and to take down the sectarian regime. This issue, uh, for, for the protesters, they, knew it's, they know that it's a long process. They can't be achieved within 13 or 14 days. It's a long process. That's why they are asking for formation of a new government with, uh, 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 with uh, some uh, new government that lead to to form these new laws uh, uh, to have the uh, to form the civil uh, state. 
Okay, now things turned quite violent in Beirut there yesterday. How volatile is the situation right now, Basel? The army now is asking uh, the protesters on the main roads, main highways in uh, Lebanon to quit these roads, or otherwise he will open it by force. The, some, uh, uh, some protesters or some uh, the leaders in these protests, uh, they ask all their colleagues on the highways and roads to quit and to uh, uh, move out of these streets too, because they, first of all, they, since they achieved the first uh, uh, demand, the resignation of the government, so now they can open the streets for uh, to somehow to regain the economic, the social and political life and move a little bit faster. Especially that we have all this kind of, you know, strike all, uh, all roads, block the banking sector to close since 14 days now. Uh, the first time that happened in, for, uh, in the recent history of Lebanon. Basel, thank you very much for bringing us up to date there. That was correspondent Basel Aridi in Beirut. Thank you.